live. Hey guys, I am live today with Cody Butler. He is an amazing consultant who has made the move from UK to Sydney, had a child, and was forced to go from nothing to almost 30,000 in 60 days last year. So he's now obviously got his own agency that's going exceptionally well, but he's also teaching other consultants how to do the same. So Cody, super excited to have you on the show, and let's just get into it, brother. Tell us... Thanks. Thanks for having me. I appreciate appreciate you having me here today. So, man, how did this all start? What I know you said you ran an agency in the UK, and what was your yep. introduction to I guess, the marketing world in the first place? Sure. So the, the abridged version, the quick version, is uh, back in around 2007, I started kind of an online business with, uh, with no capital. Hmm. I was a music teacher at the time, teaching guitar, had long hair bit of a hippie, <laughs> decided I wanted to make a few few bucks, right, and making it online seemed to be the way I did. So I started an online business, uh, had no budget whatsoever to market it, so I had to kind of learn learn the, the, the tricks of the trade myself. So I got pretty good at SEO. I got that business, uh, I was getting like a thousand visits a day to that, to that, to that website mm. off the SEO that I was doing. And it was pretty pretty successful. It was a pretty good result. So, my my fiance, well, my fiance at the time, my wife now, she's Australian. I, I'm English. We were both in England, and uh, her visa was coming to an end. So we wanted to get married, and we applied for a, a marriage visa. And they said that I had no demonstrable income. I had to get a job to do that. So, uh, I kind of like scratched my head a little bit at that point, and just kind of looked at what marketable skills that I have, and. Uh, just went to Craigslist and see what jobs were advertised, and there was there was a job just down the road for me for an SEO SEO exec. So uh, applied for it, went there the next day, and then you know 24 hours later they hired me. Pretty much, I started working the next day, and it's like I, I was terrified, man. I showed up for the first day at work, and uh, I almost I almost walked out. I was so out of my depth, it was unreal. So I just uh, I told them I said I, I want an, an office uh, a, a desk in the corner of the office yeah. because I like to work quietly. So I could turn my screen around. So I was googling the answers to all the questions everybody was asking. <laughs> but uh, that that was my introduction to uh, to, to marketing, really agency life. So oh, man, that's uh, weird. I did that for a, about a year. Uh, saw the money that was involved in the agency. Saw the kind of clients that they were getting. I just thought, look, I, c- I can do this myself. I don't know why I'm working for these guys. So start started my own agency in the UK. And got that up to around, it took me, I think, around 18 months to get that up to about 100, 180K, something like that, a year in revenue, which was pretty darn good for me at the time. Uh, I guess the big question here is how? That's what yeah. people are wondering. How do you manage to grow that big so fast? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm motivated. <laughs> so... So the answer to that is, is, is to be perfectly honest with you, there's only really two reasons why people wouldn't buy from you, that, that everybody who is in the consultancy space, the digital marketing space, knows that the desire and the demand in the marketplace is absolutely massive for what we do. It's huge. There's only two reasons they wouldn't really buy from you, and that's there's, they don't believe that you're going to do what you say you do, or there's too much risk. Those are the two reasons they wouldn't buy from you. So the way I overcame that was with just a super, super good guarantee, basically. So... Hmm. I came up with a money forward guarantee, which basically said, hey, I'll work for you for 30 days. It is chargeable. It is chargeable time. But at the end of the 30 days, if you're not 100% satisfied, you don't even get your money back. You don't even have, you don't even have to pay me. So it's not even a money back guarantee. It's like you just don't pay me and, and we end the relationship friends. So when you put your money where your mouth is like that and you offer to show your value before you take payment, then A, it's, it's very hard for them not to believe that you're telling the truth and B, it reverses that risk as well. So it overcomes the two major objections, which is I don't believe you or there's too much risk. So on the back of that guarantee, I was able to build that business up just very, very quickly indeed. Just a stupid offer no one else would even consider offering. Oh, look, it's like if you if you want if you want to be the best, you've got to, you, you've yeah. got to be prepared to put your money where your mouth is, right? <laughs> At the end of the day, I believe in a value exchange. Money, mm. money, chases, money chases value. Money chases service. So, uh, if you deliver I, value, if you deliver service, what I'm hearing a lot. Go on, just sorry. People kind of ask there. It's like, how do you know you're in the right customers? A lot of people would just take that offer without really being the right customer for you. Are you fil- have a f- big filtration process before people get to that offer, or how does that work? 
Or do you have a lot of yeah, people Yeah, so, that... so at the time... Literally yeah, so, so, so at the time... <laughs> <laughs> so I had, a, I had a few people that didn't take me up on the offer. But, you know, look, I just look at that. That's cost of business. That's cost of marketing, right? So I didn't have a, lot, I didn't have a huge amount of capital starting out. So it's like I couldn't spend $20, $30 a click on, on AdWords. I couldn't buy email lists for $3,000. Uh, so I, I had to get I had to get creative with it. So uh, instead of spending the money up front and spending say a thousand dollars on on a mail out, I thought, well, my service for the month is a thousand dollars. If it co- if it costs me, if, if I have to give service for a month for free to one person to get three other people, that's just cost of business. That's just cost of marketing. So I just didn't take it personally. Obviously, you're getting some people are going to take advantage, but I just didn't take it personally. I just realized that this is what I've got to do if I want to grow. Okay, so pretty much. Look, there's a cost, a growing cost. You know, some people may not be in the same sort of ethical place as yourself, but it's cost <laughs> doing business. <laughs> Sorry, I think about it. Look, at, at, at the end of the day, it's like it, back then I really didn't have a systematic process of getting business on board. I did a lot of networking, a lot of JV stuff, uh, a lot of white label stuff, pretty much a little bit of everything, really. So, yeah. uh, you know, I get I get a couple of good partners, and once they trusted me. You know, I had three or four agencies that were sending me a lot of business, and I had three or four JV partners that were sending me a lot of business, and uh, it, it really wasn't a problem for, for the most part. I would do it again for sure. Yeah, but how are you actually getting in front of these prospects for having that conversation in the first place? Back back then or now? Uh, let's start with back then, then we'll just transition to your move to Australia. <laughs> so back then, like networking was a big part of it. Okay. So uh, I went. I went to. Uh, you know, it's like business is people. At the end of the day, serious business is done over beer. It's done on a golf course. You, you got to. You got to eat it. with the people you do business with at some point. You know, if you want to have a great business, you've got to eat with the people you do business with. You've got to sit down and share a meal with them. So that that's that was big for me. So the breakfast meetings w- were great because we got to sit down. Uh, look, there there was one guy. I was just on. I was just on a forum and. Uh, it was, it was a PPC forum, actually, and I was looking for some tips, and this guy was t- saying how he was getting great results, and I just said, uh, uh, I looked on his profile on the forum and said he was in the town that I lived in, so I just sent him a message and said, hey, you know, you, we're in the same town, how about we have a beer? So we got together, and he ended up sending me probably $300,000 worth of business over the next three years. <laughs> nice. So you, you, you never know where it's going to come from, Josh, you never know, it's like, you know, be, be you know, if, just get out there, meet people. Uh, be willing to sit down and eat with them, build the relationships, and, and you know, at the end of the day, your net worth is your network, and your relationships are your business. Without without that, you really don't have a business. Brilliant. So let's fast forward. You got this business going well. What happened? Why did you decide to move and start again from scratch? Well, it's with the uh, uh, obviously I'm married now. Uh, I've, yeah. I've been with my wife. We've, been married for four, three, four years, something like that, and it's time to you know think about having a family. So Australia just struck me as a better place to raise a family. I think you know over the next twenty years, you, Australia's going to fare better than Europe. And of course, the climate's nice. You know, you get bigger, you get bigger gardens with the houses. You know, you got the Fast beaches. flooding the in Sydney, extreme heat <laughs> in Queensland. It's all good. <laughs> it's great. It's great. So I, originally, I was going to keep the UK business open. That was the plan, but uh, my accountant got really flaky on me. He okay. started missing filing dates, and uh, oh. you know, I was really, I was really, I was really dependent on him uh, to to manage the finances of the business, not being in the UK and not really being able to stay on top of that myself. And he started missing filing dates. I got a few penalties from the from the tax oh. service, and I was just like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't have a business with that kind of liability and. You know, an accountant for you know for legitimate reasons is getting flaky. He had there was legitimate reasons for it, but nevertheless, you know, it's like uh, you can't run a business like that. Yeah, and I'm like, you know, I, an accountant is a, an accountant is a person that has to be trustworthy. You have to build that relationship again. And I'm like, I can't just take on another accountant. I need to know who it is. So I'm just going to shut this bad boy down. Do you shut it again, or do you sell it off? So, or so that's that? what I did pretty much. I, what have we Yeah, I just I just shut it down. I, I, uh, yeah, a lot of them I just yeah. let go. Fair a lot of them I just said, hey, you know, major life change going on. It's been a fantastic ride. Uh, I, I, a couple of them came over with me. Like, I, I talked to them, yeah. I sat down with them and said, hey, I'm moving to Australia, here's the deal, do you want to continue the relationship? A couple said yes, a couple said no, I appreciate you letting us know, we'd like somebody local. Uh, so, 
mo- most of the clients didn't come with me, to be honest, so it was, really wasn't worth continuing. Fair enough. So, Australia, what happened? Because yeah. <laughs> your approach changed dramatically from what I've read. It did, it did. So, look, I got to Australia and the business was successful in the UK. I had some savings. It's not like I came here, you know, got off the boat and went to the welfare office or anything like that. So I had, I had some savings. But Sydney's expensive, man. I don't know if anyone's been here or not, but it's, it's, it's an expensive place to live. You know, you, you can burn through a lot of money very quickly here for sure. So the first year was like, you know, look, we, we'd, we'd moved to Australia. We, we set up a brand new home from scratch. We came with suitcases. That was it. And we had a baby as well. I mean, that's three life events. Any one of those could throw you off in a year. <laughs> had all three of them at the same time. So I didn't, I didn't do too much, too, too much work. I kind of took the year off, really. But then, you know, come January time, I just went into panic mode. And I'm like, my goodness, I've, I've burnt through 100K in the last 12 months. I've got a baby. I haven't really got an income. We got to do something about this. So <laughs> the, alarm <laughs> clock, the alarm clock got set four hours earlier. Uh, you know, the, the, the work day is extended. And uh, I was just like, look, I've got to get clients. I've really got to get some clients, seriously. So uh, first client I got was a dentist. Got him some results very, very quickly. Got him some great results, and he paid me very well for those results. So I just thought, hey, well, what if I go, uh, what if I go next door to uh, to the next suburb over? Just and, to clarify, is that yep. AdWords uh, SEO? Yep. That Facebook was AdWords, ads? yes. AdWords, okay. That was that was running his uh, his AdWords campaigns for him. Okay. Basically, so I got him great results. He was very happy. Paid paid you know pretty pretty darn good fee really. So I just thought, hey, is this replicatable? If I go to a dentist in the next suburb over and I show him these results would that help so help like help like crazy as you can imagine I just went and said hey you know I'm working with a dentist in the next suburb these are the results do you want some of that and he said yeah absolutely so uh, took him on board similar results so then I'm like wow this this is you know once is an anomaly two times is a scientific law <laughs> So I'm like, right, you know, we got to scale this thing. It, it, at the time, you know, we got a great campaign. We're getting great results. These seem to be a good client base. Let, let's let's go big with this. So I started a direct mail campaign, started approaching people specifically on LinkedIn, offering very specific services. And and that's where it really happened very quickly. I ended up getting the 60, uh, 18 clients in 60 days. Uh, price was really steadily increasing throughout those 60 days to where in the end, you know, I was probably charging double what I started at the beginning and people were still very happy to pay that. So it, it kind of dawned on me just at that time, this, this is how to do it. You specialize in a niche, you get the results for one, one group of people, and then you leverage those results. And, okay. uh, you know, A, it makes, makes it very, very easy to speak with prospects, and it makes it very easy for me to, to be confident to know that I'm going to deliver results. Pick a niche, get results for them. Yep. Go to the next person and say, this is what I've done. Would you like the same results? Yep. Okay. Let's That's talk right. about the specifics. How do you go to the next people and what's the approach that you use it? Because I know it's a mix of LinkedIn, direct mail, outbound yep. email. Outbound email, yep, absolutely. Yep. That work, that, that's working. It's pretty hot right now. <laughs> that's, pro- that's probably, you know, if, if I was going to advise somebody to, to start and they're on a limited budget or limited time, that would be it, outbound email. Okay. That, that's working really good. Uh, look, direct mail is my favorite. If I, if I could only have one marketing route to market for, for the rest of my life, for any business I was ever going to be in, I would choose direct mail. Direct mail is good. I like it. And I think, I think the reason it works so well is A, nobody's really doing it anymore. Your mailbox is empty these days. And secondly, it just has credibility to it that isn't there with a, with a, with a cold email. A, a direct mail says that you're a real business that has a location and you're a person and it, it just, it's just more tangible than an email. Okay. Are we able to talk about both? Like, What does a... Start with email. What is an email? Do you send a number of emails? Is it one email? How do you approach that? Yeah, it's generally it's gen it's generally going to be a series of emails. So, look, marketing is like dating, Joss. It's like people immediately ask, you know, the the, the date to marry them, and it's like, whoa, back up no. a second. I may have married you, but not now. No, now you're the freaky guy. <laughs> <So it's> like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now you're the freaky guy. So. Look, the first, the first contact is designed to create curiosity. 
The second contact is designed to create interest. The third contact is designed to create desire. And the fourth contact is designed to transfer funds. So we've got to take curiosity to interest, interest to desire, desire to transaction. So that, that can't be done in one email. Yeah. So you know, your first outreach, whether it be on Facebook or direct mail, it doesn't matter. You just want the person to be curious. Okay, I'm curious. You've got my interest. You've bought yourself another sentence. You've bought yourself another email. <laughs> You've bought yourself another minute. You know? And then the second email or you know, whatever it is, is designed to turn that curiosity into interest. To where they're like, okay, yeah, you've got my attention now. I'm listening. The third contact is, I can see how this can work for me, and then you know, get those greed glands going, basically, <laughs> get them. Would you be able to give something more specific, like in terms of how that email is structured for uh, whatever industry you can think of? Yeah. So, so basically, I mean, again, it's like, I mean, the, the, the specific details. I mean, I do offer training on this, yeah. and, the, and the copy and stuff like that is is going to be is going to be covered in that. But you, okay. generally speaking, the, the 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 first the first email is like, it, it it's almost a hypothetical. It's like, if I could do this for you, would you be interested? It's not, it's not making any promises. It's not it's not hmm. it's not aggressive. It's, there's no there's no like risk in there. It's like, hey, Joss, if I could do this for you, would you be interested? If I could show you how to get in front of 15 to 20 people a week of your ideal prospects, would you be interested? Is that something you'd be interested in? So who's going to say no to that? So, but there, there's, no, there's no buying there. There's no selling. There's no, there's no pressure. It's just, you know, hey, are you interested? Curiosity. So then the answer to that question is yes. I mean, is that, is that email yeah. easy or hard to say yes to? <laughs> Low commitment barrier type thing. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's very easy to say yes to, and it's very hard to say no to. If I could show you how to get in front of X number of clients each week, would you be interested? Whereas if I say, hey, would you like to hire me as a business consultant? Easy or hard to say yes to? Easy or hard to say no to? So most people go at it from, you know, their initial outreach. It's very very hard to say yes to, and it's very very easy to say no to. We want to flip that around. We want our initial approach to be very very easy to say yes to and very hard to say no to. So then. You know that creates the interest, right? Or the yeah. curiosity, rather. Now you've like you're curious. You might reach back and say, you know, quite often people will call back or you know reach out, email, and say, yeah, I'm interested. Let's book a call. Not yet. We're not ready yet for a call. So I'll push back and and say, hey, uh, yeah, happy to jump on a call with you, Joss, but I don't want to waste your time. I know you're a busy man. I want to be respectful. So how about I send you a little bit of information about what we do? prior to jumping on the call, that way you can get a feel for who I am, what I do. If it's right, we'll get on the call. If it's not, we won't. That, okay. So you only that, send this email to this, these people if they say yes or something to that first email? Or do you send it anyway? Yeah, well, yeah, no, look, no, no, no. So if they don't respond to the first email, they get another curiosity email. We okay. can't skip steps. We can't skip the curiosity step. So unless they engage in curiosity, we, we, if they don't engage in curiosity, we leave them alone. So we, I, I, I'll okay. make three or four efforts to get them to engage in curiosity. But if they don't, you know, it's like saying, hey, if the girl says, I'm not going on a date with you, do, do we just then ask her to marry us? <laughs> probably, not quite. Probably, not the, probably not the best strategy, right? We've got to, we've got to get that first date. We, and that's curiosity. In this, in this case, if, if we can't get them to engage in the curiosity, move on. They're a dead loss. Yeah. They're, they're not going to do any good for you at all. Okay, brilliant. So, so that's where you know you you've got to have multiple follow-up sequences, right? For the people that, hmm. the ones that engage in curiosity, and then the ones that don't. It's it's two completely different follow-up sequences, depending on their behaviour, pretty much. Brilliant. Okay, so curiosity, then it's attention. Interest. Or interest. Curiosity. Second in interest. step is interest. Okay. We want to turn curiosity into interest. And and that's where you know we use indoctrination materials. That's where we push back. So look, you're not gonna you're not gonna get on the phone with Frank Kern two minutes after you ask for a phone call. It's not gonna happen. If you if you're the industry leader, if you're if you're you know a thought leader, you're 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 high up in the industry. You're not just gonna jump on the phone with people. It doesn't work. Try and get on the phone with Frank Frank Kern, even if you're interested in buying his premium products. He's gonna push you back. So. And there's a reason for that. <laughs> so what we want to do, if they, before they get on the phone with us, it, you know, now they've indicated interest, I'll send them some, some material that A, uh, it positions me as the expert in the industry. 
it, it shows some case studies potentially if I have them of, of what I've done for other people, give some social proof. It positions my fees. So I want people to know that I'm premium, premiumly priced before getting on the phone with me. If, you know, if they think I'm going to work for $300 a month, then it's, it's a waste of everybody's time on the phone call, right? So they need to see the premium pricing or at least have a feel for that. And uh, I'm going to send them some material that really overcomes a lot of the objections that they would have. Uh, you know, I know what I, with my market, I know what the common objections are. So I'm going to send them material that kind of uh, gives them solutions to those objections ahead of time. So they're like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I can see how this could work. So now, now that curiosity is like, yeah, I'm interested now. Uh, so if they, if they, okay. If, if they come back to you, Josh, and say, hey, yeah, look, I've read your material. I think it's fantastic. I, th I love what you're doing. I'm, I'm, I'd, I'd love to have a call with you. Now, now this is a prospect at this point. Okay. Now they're interested, right? Now they're genuinely interested. So, again, we want to push them back, make them jump through some hoops. You know, don't, don't just get on the phone. Just, you know, the, make them go through a booking calendar. Make them fill out an application. Make them prove to you that they are worth your time. You know, because your time is something you can never get back. And the last thing you want is to spend an hour with somebody who just wants some free consulting. That's not good. So make them jump through some hoops. Make them prove that they are a genuine prospect. They're genuinely interested. And then when you get on the phone, now we've, got, uh, we've gone from curiosity to interest. We've gone from interest to desire. You know, this person is now desirous of the result that you can provide for them. They know who you are, what you can do, the result that, they can, that you can deliver, and an idea of your cost. So, you know, a lot, look, I had a call, I had a call yesterday, to Josh, and, and the guy just said, hey, look, I've already decided I'm going to sign up. Do, do we do the call anyway? Do you want to go through the sales pitch anyway, or do you just send me a link? What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's the result of good indoctrination Ooh. material and a good, a good desire sequence within, within your follow-up. People will come to you, you know, they're ready to buy and that desire is already there when they get on the phone. Brilliant. Okay, so from there, you're on the phone, you obviously make the sale, then do what you do normally. Yep. I'm assuming it's a very similar approach to LinkedIn. You try to get them first contact just to get their interest and then yep. get them off LinkedIn. Yep. Yep. Cool. Exactly right. So look, so whether you use LinkedIn, direct mail, email, uh, a horse and carriage, smoke signals, it doesn't matter. That, all of that stuff is just the, it's the vehicle to deliver your message. It's your message and your content that does the heavy lifting. So, you know, people are confused. They go, oh, I want to try Facebook ads, thinking that, like, Facebook ads is something that's going to get them results. It's like, no, Facebook is just a good way to get, it's a vehicle to deliver your content. It's a vehicle to deliver your message. If your message is crap, it's not going to work for you. <laughs> if, your, if your message is junk, if your content is substandard, Nothing's going to work for you, but it, you know if you've got LinkedIn is great because of the search features. We can get really granular with the search. So, you know, we, like for me, for example, I can I can locate dental practices within a radius of a city who have more than ten employees, and I can I can nail that down to uh, owner or partner. So that that's someone I want to talk to. So what what LinkedIn does is allows me to put my proven message in front of the right person. That's why I like LinkedIn. Uh, same with direct mail. Direct mail, if you're willing to do a little bit of research and find the right person, you know, go to Google, find the right person, make sure that the letters go into the right person. It potentially allows you to put a very targeted message in front of a very specific person offering a very specific solution to a very specific problem. So, we, you know, my strategy is to aim, aim, aim small, hit small. Okay. You know, I don't, I don't want to be carpet bombing the... the you know, the marketplace with, with generic marketing messages it's like, you know, hey, Mr. Dentist, if I could do this for you, would you be interested? Here's what I've done for your competitor 10 kilometers down the road. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's just, yeah. it's just, just understanding that it's different. Vehicles, right? it's brilliant. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure does. <laughs> Got a few other people asking questions here. Um, let me sure. see this. Okay, sorry, he's just said that. How do you get the clients on pipeline, blah, blah. How do you measure, if, when you're initially getting started, how do you measure that the clients were 100% satisfied? Is that just them saying, hey, I'm satisfied? Or do you set metrics with them initially? Look, hit, hit, that's a good question. So here's, here's the answer. And this, this is like a lot, of, a lot of people 
are very confused in business, and this will help a lot of people. This is probably the most valuable advice I could give anybody, is your bank account tells the truth. Your friends don't tell. If you want to know how well you're doing in business, don't ask your mother, don't ask your wife, don't ask your friends. Ask your bank account. Your bank account doesn't lie. <laughs> it's very, very honest. <laughs> so um, the way I measure satisfaction is do they, do they pay the invoice on a monthly basis? So I'm not cheap. You know, I, I'll be up front. I'm not cheap. My services are not cheap, but they are quality. So you know, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody that, that, to work with people that want the best. They understand the value of that, and they're willing to pay for it. And the, my measure of am I delivering is do they continue to pay my invoice on a monthly basis. Because the kind of people that I'm working with, they're not dummies. If you're not delivering value, if you're not give, pe people don't get to be multi-million dollar business owners by being silly with money. They get, they get to grow to that size by understanding that for every dollar they give, they've got to give two back, they've got to get two back. So pretty much, I ask my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Is this client satisfied with my work? Is this client happy? Please. And, and, and that, that's how I do it, yeah. And obviously, talking to them as well. Like again, I mean, the relationship is very important. Uh, ha getting feedback, and, and a lot of times, like when you're going into a more advanced service that that you know transcends the typical kind of bargain basement offer that's in the marketplace that most people are offering, <clears throat> it becomes more of a consultative service. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We want to be getting that feedback from from the client as well, and saying, "Hey, we sent you X number of leads this week. Can you feedback me? Can you feedback to me? What you know? Are they converting? If they're not converting, where is it breaking down? Are you getting them on the phone? Great. Are they booking in? No, they're not booking in. Okay, well, we need to put something in place in the funnel to make sure that they book in. You know, are they booking in? Yep. Are they showing up? No, they're not showing up. Okay, well, we need to incentivize the show up. So we've, we've got to be getting that feedback yeah. from, from the client on an ongoing basis. And when you build that relationship like that and you're working a bit more closely with the client, then you just kind of know if they're happy or not. Brilliant. All right, mate. Um, I want to ask you next. What is it that... <laughs> <laughs> you answer so many questions in such a short period of time. What has it been the most, I guess... Pivotal, um, most important lesson you've learned along the way? It's don't be afraid. You've, you've got to believe in yourself. You've got to believe in yourself and you've got to back yourself. So, look, if, you, if you're not prepared to offer a money back guarantee, you're basically saying, I'm too risky to invest my own money in. So, what, what kind of message is that sending to the client, right? If you say, well, no, I'm not, willing to, I'm not willing to put my own money on the line to back my own work. And they're like, well, you expected me to put my money on the line to back your work. If you're not, if you're not, you know, to go back to the beginning of the conversation, it's like a great guarantee is the basis of rapid growth. That's the basis of it, in my opinion, in my estimation and experience. And if you're not prepared to back yourself, if you don't believe in yourself enough to do that, then why should the client believe in you? If you're not willing to take the risk or a good chunk of the risk when it's your what you know what's behind the curtain you know what you're going to deliver and if I'm not willing to take the risk on me at that point in time why should the client invest in me if I'm not prepared to invest in myself and believe in myself why should the client invest in me and at the end of the day they don't know you from Adam or all, all, all they have to go on really is some some case studies and some words that may or may not be true at the end of the day they don't know and the, the level of confidence that you exude when you pitch your service, when you talk to them. It's, it, it comes down to the level of confidence that you exude and the only, you, you can't fake that. You either believe in yourself or you don't. If you believe in yourself, they'll believe in you. If you don't, they won't. <laughs> I just had the funniest comment here from Josh. I was meant to have a call with Cody yesterday. I cancelled on him. Sorry, Cody. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Love it. So we'd have, we'd have covered a lot of this stuff on the call anyway, anyway, Josh. So uh, <laughs> this is kind of the stuff we talk about on the call. It's just a little bit more specific. So that, that's all right. It happens. It happens. I had, I had a good day. Yes, I had a good day yesterday without you, Josh. That's all right. <laughs> so what are you most excited about now, Cody? What is it that got you fired up? What is it that you are looking forward to? What's the next big challenge? It's it's the coaching. It's the coaching. Like the the agency changes my life. The coach changes everybody's life. So okay. it it. You know, it's like I, I can impact my life with my agency you know, and my clients as well, like the yeah. dentists and stuff like that. But it's like, you know, I, I'm working with people now that uh, 
literally changing lives and, and to be fair they're changing their own lives i'm just giving them i'm just giving them some information that will help do that you know you just know, fast no tracking process that. really if the people just are fast track. if the people are yeah yeah got that grit yeah. or whatever you want to call it they'll get there eventually but you're just giving them the tool sets that you've learned from the exactly painful right. experiences of not having done it the wrong way <laughs> That's exactly right. You know, I've got a, I've got a private Facebook group, and and uh, you know, people in there go, they just go, oh no, I messed up, I did this, and it's like, it's all right. You know, how do you think I know how to answer this question? <laughs> <laughs> I've blown many a sale, I've lost many a client. It's like it's all cost of doing business. But yeah, look, no, I I really enjoy like you know working working with people and seeing them, uh, seeing their lives change and stuff like that. And I've got a lot of people that are in my situation. They've got young families, and and they just want to do right by their families. They just want to provide a better life for their for themselves and their families, and you know, having those stories come back really fills me with joy. And I've, I've always wanted to look from from the very beginning. I went to a Tony Robbins seminar in like 2007, and I wanted to be Tony Robbins. I wanted to sell from the stage, and, you know, do that coaching stuff. And it's mm. like that's that's never left me. But at the end of the day, you've got to have you've, you've got to have the experience, you've got to have the track record, you've got to have all of that stuff behind you. And it, it's taken me 10 years to get to the point to where it's like, right, you know, this is legit. Brilliant. I, 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 this is legit now. <laughs> awesome, mate. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. So if people want to connect with you and learn more about your coaching or just start experience, what does you do? I know you've got a brilliant option sequence that people can... <laughs> Go and see some of your stuff. Can you just? What's the best place for them to visit or connect with you on? Yeah, so so uh, CodyButler.me. There's there's some links on there to where you can sign up for some free stuff. But yeah, like you know, I really pride myself in my free content. You know, I like I like to think that you know a lot of my free stuff is better than a lot of paid stuff that's out there. So you know, my my free stuff is really I, I put a lot of effort into making that top notch. So if you spend an hour with me in a free training, you know, I promise you that's going to be worth it if you're serious about growing your, your agency. Uh, info at codybutler.com you can reach me at info at codybutler.com if you're interested in, in, in specific stuff uh, you can reach me there and uh, yeah I'm on social media Google, uh, Facebook me you'll find me on social media I'm not sure exactly what the URL is I've got URL I've got it here somewhere but type in Cody Butler you'll find me I'm, I'm, on, I'm on Facebook and stuff like that so I'm not hidden I'm out there <laughs> <laughs> if you have any more questions please leave them in the comments I'm sure Cody or myself will get through to them later and again, please give Cody a massive thanks in the comments. He's been very generous with his time here today. And I just want to say thank you for joining us. And guys, later today we'll have Ari Meisel joining us on the show. So that should be a bit of fun as well. All right, until next time, we'll see you all soon.